The week for March the 20th, 2021 is Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? A hymn that's very different from the others we've heard these past weeks. Simpler in its language. More of an unknown in terms of who wrote it, where and when. It's of course one of the many hymns we know nowadays as spirituals or African-American spirituals. Originally known as cabin songs, plantation melodies or jubilees. Composed by African-American slaves in the cotton plantations of the American South. And intended for singers only and the people of their community. The language of the spirituals, including Were You There, is simple with a great deal of repetition, as its authors and singers would have been people who could not read and write, not because they were unable to, but because they were forbidden by their owners to do so. The penalty for a slave caught reading or writing was being beaten, and their teachers were fined or put in prison. The task of the author of their songs then was to express the stories and truths of the Bible in the simplest of words with the deepest of meanings and to add to them the most moving of melodies. And they did this in abundance. Their simplicity also meant, of course, when they heard, were heard by people in other countries and cultures, they too would sing and be moved and remember them. So the story of Were You There is not the story of who wrote it, when and where. We don't know that exactly. It's more the story of how did a hymn for slaves' ears and voices only become one of the most moving and meaningful of our Easter hymns and known throughout the world. In Western hymn books, a Congregationalist minister from America, the Reverend William Eliezer Barton, is credited with being the first person to put the hymn in print in 1899, and we'll come back to him later. But in fact, the first time the hymn appeared in print was 1884. 15 years previously, in Jubilee songs as sung by Slayton's Jubilee Singers, where Jubilee referred to the years of freedom or Jubilee for slaves, but was also a signal to audiences that the singers would be black. There were a number of groups of Jubilee singers in the States at that time and Slayton's singers were employed by the Slayton Lyceum Bureau which toured the country getting people to give lectures which was a great source of entertainment in the late 1800s. The singers provided some interludes between the lectures not just in their songs but in the plays and sketches that they did. At first, the singers sang gospel songs or more classical white songs, keeping the spirituals for warming up or singing when they were on their own. But as more people overheard them, they were persuaded to include them in their repertoire and the audience loved them. The Slayton Jubilee Singers' first published version has the first line, Was you there? when they crucified my Lord, which is how they would express themselves in everyday language. And the tune was simpler also in parts. Despite their increasing popularity on stage, the Slayton singers and other black jubilee singing groups still faced prejudice off stage. 
having to try four or five different hotels after a performance before one would let them in because of their colour. And though they were complimented on their performances, this was mixed in with some less welcome comments. Like one person reported in a newspaper as saying of one of the soloists, what a great grand opera singer that man would be if he was white. Slayton's singers then were the first to get Were You There in print. But in terms of entry into church music, especially uh, white and western uh, European church music, we return to William Eliezer Barton. His father was of English descent. His mother was Scottish, descended in fact from Alexander Selkirk, on whom the story of Robinson Crusoe is based. And Barton's cousin was Clara Barton, who founded the American Red Cross. He was not only interested in the songs of the former slaves, but in the people themselves. For as well as their own children, Barton and his wife took in a young, abandoned, mixed-race boy and a young African-American girl whose mother asked them to take care of her. Barton was a Congregationalist minister with a passion for the life and times of Abraham Lincoln, writing a great many books about him. He wrote other non-fiction, fiction and religious books also. And he gathered spirituals together by sitting with African-American former slaves in their homes or after church services and getting them to sing to him while he wrote down the words and music. In this way, he compiled his Old Plantation Hymns in 1899. Barton commented and wrote a brief history, if he could, of each hymn that he wrote. Of Were You There? He said it was a tender and beautiful hymn. A harmony was added and the tune arranged by Canon Charles Winfred Douglas and the hymn was put into the Episcopal Hymn Book of the United States in 1940, making Were You There When They Crucified My Lord the very first African-American spiritual to be included in a hymn book that was widely used throughout the States and then throughout the world. It's thought lightly, though, that Barton heard Were You There while attending a concert by another group of Jubilee singers, the Fisk Jubilee Singers. They were named after Clayton Fisk, who had given generously to the first university for black students. When funding ran low, the treasurer of the university, George White, got a group of students together to tour and give concerts to continue to fund the university. The first, the Fisk sin singers travelled widely, performing for Queen Victoria and other European monarchs. And in 1873 and in 1876, they were only 20 miles along the road from Newcomnock, performing in the town of Ayr according to local historian Edward England, in 1873 and 1876. Edinburgh and Rothsey, it seems, were also on their itinerary. Some wise Scot is apparently reported as saying that the Christian faith is better felt than telt. The African-American spiritual Were You There When They Crucified My Lord does, I believe, both. It very clearly states the basic truths of the story of our Lord's death and resurrection and the simplicity and emotional impact of its words causes us to feel the sadness, pain 
and awe of the main events of Easter. It's intensely personal, my Lord, and challenging. Were you there? Drawing us to the foot of the cross and to that holy ground outside the empty tomb. We've probably noticed by now in our hymn of the week that many of the hymn writers suffered persecution or personal tragedy of some kind. With Were You There, as with all African-American spirituals, it's not the suffering of one individual that lies behind the song, but the suffering of many lifetimes of an entire group of people. Speaking of African Americans and their Christian songs and Christian faith, someone remarked how unusual it was for the oppressed to adopt the religion of the oppressor. How unusual indeed, but what a testimony to the power and truth of the gospel, that though the African American slaves were so horrendously and inhumanly treated, they still adopted the Christian faith as their own, identifying with those in the Bible, Old and New Testaments, who also suffered from the Hebrew slaves in Egypt, to most of all, the suffering Christ of Calvary. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Yes, we were. Would surely have come the answer from people, many of whose family, friends and neighbours met their death on a tree. What a gift this hymn is to us all. What a price was paid for it. Those from whose shared experience it comes, and most of all, by the experience of our Lord for us. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? <laughs> 